Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this lecture we will be studying the adaptive multiple antenna techniques. These adaptive multiple antenna techniques helps us select between the spatial diversity as well as the spatial multiplexing that is available. Both of them are extremely important because one provides us with the rate of transmission and other provides us with the reliability of transmission. So the future of the wireless communication system is going to adapt this multiple antenna technologies. So the reason is this multiple antenna technologies provide us with better quality, better capacity and reliability of transmission. The two most popular approaches for communicating in MIMO technology is called as diversity and spatial multiplexing. Let us see what is the meaning of this diversity. In diversity, same amount of information is transmitted through multiple channels that are available. Since all this channel will go through independent or individual fading effect, it will ensure me that at least one of the channel will go through minimum fading effect and in this case it will give me the reliability of transmission. Similarly, spatial multiplexing means the amount of information that is coming or the data bit stream that is coming is divided into equal sets and all the different data sets are transmitted on different channels. This spatial multiplexing ensures higher data rate is achieved. Since one single transmission achieves a data rate of x, if I am using 8 different channels for transmission, then the data rate will increase to 8 times. Hence, spatial multiplexing and diversity are equally important for us. Spatial multiplexing can be related to the OFDM technology where we have multiple sub-carriers in which we are transmitting the information. Hence, MIMO has got two flavors. One is called as the diversity which is helping us give the reliability of the communication system and the second one is called a spatial multiplexing which is helping us give the higher data rates. So, the practical systems require some trade-off between this rate and reliability. Hence, we require to choose from either spatial diversity or spatial multiplexing. In order to select from this rate and reliability or diversity and spatial multiplexing, there is a one bit feedback channel which has been transmitted from the receiver to the transmitter. This feedback channel should have no error and should not have any delay also. This feedback channel will give us the idea of whether the rate is required or reliability is required depending on the current scenario of the system. The current scenario may be the availability of the different channel, the traffic that is available in the other networks and so on. So adaptive antenna technology is basically switching between the diversity and the multiplexing. So this technique provides us with many advantages. Let us look at what these advantages are. The first advantage is increased coverage. Since we are using MIMO technology in which we have multiple antennas at the transmitter as well as at the receiver, the gain of the entire system is increased very much. Because the gain of the system is increased very much, we are able to have higher coverage area in this technique. The second advantage is increasing the capacity of the system. Since we are using multiple antennas at the transmitter and the receiver, we are able to increase the signal to interference ratio. Increasing the signal to interference means reducing the interference to an extreme extent. Since we are able to do this, experimental results have shown that the capacity increases five-fold times. The same concept if you remember we have studied in the GSM in which when we are increasing the signal to interference ratio we are able to increase the capacity of the system. The next advantage is reduction of the power. Since we are transmitting the information to the required user or a wanted user we are able to reduce the power of transmission to a great extent and this is done because of the beam steering. The next advantage is lower power requirements. Because we are able to transmit to the required or wanted user, extremely low power signals are required. And this is possible because of the beam steering antennas that are available to us. A very narrow beam is formed in such a way that the information signal reaches directly to the user and not anywhere else. Hence, minimum power is required which also reduces the cost of the system. The next advantage is improved link quality or reliability. 
Remember, because we have the diversity in which we are transmitting the same information through multiple channels, all the channels are going through independent fading effect. This will ensure that at least one channel has a minimum fading and will reach the receiver appropriately. Hence, this signal provides us with a reliable link. The next advantage is increased spectral efficiency. We all know that we have a limited spectrum and limited bandwidths that are available to us. Hence, in order to make a profitable business, we have to put multiple users into the spectrum or the bandwidth that is available to us. So, the measurable information that is the billable information is actually dependent on the multiplexing techniques that we are using and it is also dependent on the modulation techniques that we are using. Since we are using multiple antennas, we are able to reduce the cost of the system to a great extent. The next advantage is security. Since it is difficult to tap the information of the user that is in the direction of transmission, the intruder will have to be in the same direction in which the transmitting antenna is transmitting the information. Since it is difficult to maintain the direction of the user because of the beam steering antennas as the mobile user is free to move in any direction, security measures provided here are extremely high. The next advantage is reduction of handoff. Since we have seen here that extremely high capacity is provided by reducing the signal to interference, there is no requirement of cell splitting. Because there is no requirement of cell splitting, the number of handoff that are available reduces to a great extent as there is a wider coverage area available for the user to move. And the final one is a spatial information. The spatial information of the user is available at any point of time so that the data has been transmitted to the user. In this way, location based services can be provided to the user depending on the spatial information. Let us see what are the drawbacks of using this technique. The first is the trans receiver complexity. Since we are using MIMO technologies in which we have multiple antennas at the transmitter and the receiver, real-time maintaining or real-time calibration of all these antennas are required. Hence, the trans-receiver complexity increases to a great extent. Next is the radio resource management. Resource management is required to a great extent. For example, say I initiate a connection, then I'll put a demand on the network for the channels. Hence, the radio resource management should be able to provide me with these channels. Since we are using multiple antennas, the number of channels are also going to increase. This increases an extreme high demand on the RRM or the radio resource management unit. And the last one is the physical size of the antenna. For example, consider a 900 megahertz band of the signal. This signal we all know is a GSM band that has been transmitted. Since we are using multiple antennas, let us consider 8 antennas are being used. All these 8 antennas are horizontally placed with certain distance among them. If we consider the 900 megahertz band, then the distance or the wideness of this antenna comes to 1.2 meters. And this wideness or the length of the antenna is high. If we consider to increase the frequency to up to 2 gigahertz, even if we consider to increase the frequency up to 2 gigahertz, the width of this antenna comes to 60 centimeters. If not an issue, this still creates a problem because the width of this antenna is extremely high. So these are certain drawbacks of the multiple antennas that have been used. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.